Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Yarn and Dinosaurs podcast. My name is Ruth, I am the designer behind Ruth Brash Designs, and I am the yarn dyer behind Fearless Feet Fiber Company. Welcome on this cloudy Thursday afternoon in central Pennsylvania. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about some knitting, some crocheting, some weaving, some yarn dyeing, all the things, knit alongs, projects. I'm so excited. Lots to talk about. So first of all, uh, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. We're all homeschoolers now. What? If you have children that are school age, like I do, you have found yourself suddenly homeschooling because all the schools are shut down. Boy, oh boy. So we're not gonna spend too much time on that. You're probably on here because you finished your schoolwork for the day and you're like, time to knit, time to look at podcasts. I don't want to think about homeschooling anymore, which is cool. So if I look a little tired, if I'm a little whacked out, probably because it's day four of suddenly learning to homeschool. So that is why I have my trusty coffee and some projects to show you. <laughs> I realized that this is the Coffee Yarn and Dinosaurs podcast, and I don't talk about coffee too much. And for those of you who don't know, the dinosaurs was originally because uh, my husband and I were turning a bus into a tiny home and driving across the country. So the dinosaurs was supposed to be like about my family. But now I mostly just talk about yarn things and I've never changed the name of the podcast. But here we are, Coffee Yarn and Dinosaurs. Okay, so finished objects. Let's start there first finished object was actually finished last time and I forgot to show you guys. This is the Robin hoodie I was working on. So this pattern is, oh, I'm showing you the back of it. <laughs> this is a very, very cute little pattern by Lisa Shemery, who is a uh, frogonette on, you know, Ravelry and Instagram and all that. And it's just this cute little kid's hoodie. This is the four-year-old size that I knit for my middle son. And while the hood looks enormous and it looks so tall that it could fit on my head, when he puts it on, it actually creates this cute little, um, like it looks like the archer hood. It's really, it's really, really cute. Like Robin Hood, you know, go figure. And it has this pretty slip stitch design on the edges of it. And I just love it. And he does too, which is great. Um, when I put this on my son for the first time, it just, he wouldn't take it off. He loved it. So he does still wear it. Uh, the yarn is Fearless Feet Fiber Company. It is my hand dyed yarn, the Aaron Tweed base. And it's a cloudy day here, right? So everything's a little bit yellow, a little bit warm. So this is a little bit more red in real life, a reddish brown. It is the apple cider colorway. So I'm very pleased with this. It fits him perfectly. I had my doubts. I thought the hood was gonna be too big. I wasn't quite sure the body was gonna be long enough, but I blocked it out and it works perfectly. Oh, and the little pocket. Look at this cute little pocket. Look at that cute little pocket. He's so cute. So he runs around with his little hands in his pocket. And it's just, it's adorable. I absolutely love it. I am so pleased with this. I might even make one for my older son. I, I love it. So that is my only actual finished object for right now. But I have been making lots of progress on my gradient blanket. Surprisingly, for those of you who have watched this podcast or seen my projects for any length of time, I'm actually working fairly monogamously on this blanket, which is a surprise because usually I want to cast on all the things and buy all the yarn and try all the new things and shiny pretty oh my gosh it's so you know but I'm actually working fairly monogamously on a project so here is look how nice and big this is getting it's so pretty look at that so so big so this is about 40 inches wide there we go it's about 40 inches wide. And right now it is, I wanna say almost 30 inches high. So I'm going for just about square. So I have probably about 10 more, 10 more inches to go. And I am just super duper loving how this is coming out. I did have to switch to another 
skein of yarn because this is a gradient yarn. Obviously, I can't just make it all in one skein of yarn, but I'm very pleased that I was successfully able to match up the skeins. So you can see the gradient just continues. I'm sure you can see this right here. This is where I switched. This set of blocks is where I started the new gradient. So it's not like 100% perfect, but if you hold the blanket up as a whole, you really can't really, really tell where I switch skeins. Which, to pat myself on the back, is pretty amazing. And I'm very pleased with it. So, hopefully this will be done soon. And I still have to decide, because it's for my sister-in-law who's having twins, a boy and a girl. And I'm not sure, this is going to be my boy blanket. But I'm not sure if I want to do the girl blanket in different colors or if I want to do a different pattern altogether. So we shall see, time will tell. Oh, and the other thing that I'm really, really happy with, I feel like I made a really smart decision and I started weaving in the ends as I go. So look, no ends. So when I get done with this blanket, I'll just be done. I won't have to weave in a bajillion ends on either side, I will just be done, which is very exciting. And I could put a border on it, but I think I actually really just like how it looks without the border. I think I'm just happy with the edges. Um, the triangles do have sort of that smoothed off knit look edge that I'm very happy with, so I don't know that I feel the need to put a border around it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But I love it. I keep saying this would be such a pretty cowl or like, oh, it could be a cowl, it could be, it could be a poncho. <laughs> so many things you could do with this and it would be really, really pretty. So I'm very pleased with that. That is whip number one. And that has been getting almost all of my attention. The other one that has been getting my attention is my, ooh, I'm all tangled up. Uh-oh, well, yeah, it is what it is, <laughs> is my Wohin sock, which if you remember from last time was the, uh, what's it called, warm-up, the warm-up level sock for Sock Madness. And I decided that I do not want to do Sock Madness this year. Um, it's not because I don't enjoy the pattern. The pattern is really cool looking. The slip stitches or not the slip stitches, the picked up stitches and all that, the texture on the heel flap. So it's not that I don't enjoy Sock Madness. I've just found that for me right now, because things are a little bit up in the air, right? Like we're all of a sudden homeschooling and everybody's at home, kind of quarantined. I don't think that I want to put the pressure of a competition on myself right now. And that's okay. And I'm very happy with that. So this this is going to get frogged. <laughs> it's not that I don't like the sock. I have just found that I am not motivated to finish it. Um, I just don't want to. And I kind of felt that way starting out. And thinking back, you could see me dithering a little bit in the last video about whether or not I wanted to do sock madness. And I think if we're all going to be home and we're going to be having limited knitting time, and some people, I'm not super duper stressed out about being home all the time because I'm always home all the time because <laughs> I'm a stay at home mom. So I think, I think I'm just going to frog it. Boom. Doo -doo -doo. Sorry if this stresses you out. I know some people get stressed out watching knitting get frogged. I personally find it extremely relaxing. Um especially I find it very cathartic when it's a pattern that I don't want to knit I find frogging to be extremely cathartic call me a weirdo I probably am but that's okay so anyway maybe if maybe if this might bug you guys I shouldn't do this on camera huh okay <laughs> anyway so that's um that was the other thing that was taking a lot of my time is I was working on that sock because I was trying to reach the sock madness deadline for um, competition, for starting competition. Anyway, I found that I, I just don't want to be speed knitting right now. So that's fine. 
because part of it also is that I have so many ideas of what I want to do with my own designs that I just want to do my own designs. <laughs> like, like that gradient blanket I was showing you, I'm still interested in it, which is great because so many baby blankets, I will start working on them and halfway through, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much work. Why is it so big? Why am I doing a blanket? And either it doesn't get finished or I frog it or whatever, but this one I actually enjoy and I'm still interested in. And every time a new zigzag or a new uh, entrelock block section comes up, I'm like, yes, here we go. I'm here for it. I'm ready. Let's go. And I love that. So I just want to work on projects right now that interest me. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to work on anything. So frogging the socks. Ta-da! <laughs> it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Something else that's fun that I've been working on is I started pin loom weaving. Wow, that light is making this really bright and blown out. Let me see if I can change this for a second. You see it now? A little bit better. Hang on, let's turn that light off. Okay, a little better? better look it's a loom you can see it okay so <laughs> um pin loom weaving pin loom weaving is this little tiny loom and i have a video of me actually weaving the squares if you want to go back a couple of videos so what you get out of that pin loom is you get these cute little woven squares look how cute each of these is um fingering weight yarn held double so i've been taking yarn how do i explain this i have a lot of yarns that i cake up because i think that they'll work well for a project and then i either turn out to not do the project or i don't like how it looks when i start using them or something like that so i have a lot of sock yarns that are caked up but not used so i'm holding them double and i love how different each of these squares look look you've got this 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 because the yarn is pooling in different places on every square and I just I love how they look so I'm going to be using this to use up some of my scraps of sock yarn or full skeins of sock yarn that were intended for projects and didn't get used I don't remember what this is I'll have to look it up because it's really really pretty this is one of those yarns that I saw in the skein and in the cake and I was like eh, I don't think I like it that much and then I started weaving it and was like oh Holy crap, it's so pretty. Um, this one is Toadstool by Yarn Cafe Creations. Um, and she does a lot of new colorways over and over again. So I don't think that that's currently available because I bought it from her maybe like two years ago. And it I caked it up because I remember it was going to be crocheted socks and it did not work out for crocheted socks because crocheted socks are hard. And so it has sat and now it is actually living up to its potential and becoming a woven square, which is great. My ultimate plan for these is to make them into a blanket, like a nice cozy blanket. I'm just gonna uh, patchwork them, you know, lay them out. But if it gets to the point that I'm like, wow, this is so many squares and I can't handle this, I might just make it into a little blanket or a pillow or a bag or something like that. We shall see. But I'm really, really enjoying this. I'm trying to do one or two a day. I've missed a couple days lately, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 11 of these and I need like 600 for a queen size blanket, <laughs> which is 28 skeins of sock yarn. I mathed it out. We'll see. We shall see. So that's about it for what I've been working on. Um, I have been, I got to dye yarn a little bit. Oh, it's an avalanche. So I decided to do some like semi-solids or tonals just because you always need, you always need a good semi-solid or a tonal for something. I might break these up into mini skeins. I might not. But this one is called Steel Nautical. 
flamingos with yo-yos and send out the flying monkeys. And I really, really enjoy them. I think they're just fun and bright and happy and I really, really like them. And I have plans, I have plans for nautical already because it's my favorite, shh, don't tell the others. <laughs> And the other thing I did was mini skein sets. And the mini skeins are exploding over there. So I just, I mean, you can see them they're hanging out right there. They're just jumping. And so I'm not going to bother pulling them out right now. But I did get to do some mini skein sets. And that was very, very fun. So let's see. What else is going on? Oh, okay. So my next project, um, you can't actually see, but I'm going to tell you about it. I am working on learning to make gluten-free sourdough bread. My whole family is gluten-free. Yes, my whole family is gluten-free. My daughter and I don't need to be, but it's just easier to have the kitchen gluten-free because it's such a hassle and a nightmare if you have some people gluten-free and other people not gluten-free and you're like, Where? scrub the counter down really good. So our whole, our whole family is just gluten-free. And I had never known that you could make sourdough bread with gluten-free flour. I just, I don't know why. I assumed it wasn't possible, but I read online that you could and I, wow, okay, let's try it. So I am on day three of creating my own sourdough starter, gluten-free sourdough starter, and I'm going to insert the videos for you here so you can see sort of my progress for the first three days. And I'm very, very excited about how it's progressing. I think it's actually going to be functional, which is amazing because then I might be able to bake gluten-free sourdough bread, which I haven't had sourdough bread in like six years, which is how long we've been gluten-free. So that would be amazing. This is the first day of creating my sourdough starter. I am starting by putting four ounces of gluten-free flour mix into a glass jar. And you can see from my scale, I am not the most accurate of all measures in the entire world, but I'm doing my best. So four ounces of flour, four ounces of water, and then I'm just mixing it all up with a wooden spoon and then putting it over in the corner cupboard. Okay, so this is day two of my sourdough, my gluten-free sourdough starter. The first overnight, I don't really see any difference so far, but I've heard that that's normal, especially for gluten-free sourdough. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put in the next measure of water and flour, and I will mix it and then recover it again okay day three of making sourdough starter you can see that there's a whole lot of bubbles going on in here which is really really cool none of these were here yesterday and it has if i smell it it's starting to get this like tangy fermented smell which is perfect because that's what it's supposed to be doing it's really almost crumbly today, which is weird. And this is after I've mixed it for a while. I'm not really sure if it's supposed to look like this, um, but I'm gonna add my extra flour and water anyway and see what happens. So hopefully I will have good news on the bread baking front the next time that I come back here to talk to you guys. Let's see. And the last thing is projects, my, my goal projects for what I wanna start. I want to start the, wow, this is really dark. See if you can see it. I want to start the Sandoval Swancho sweater. Sweater, Swancho, I don't know. But I'm gonna use this beautiful, this one is called Deep Truth. It's this nice dark navy from Sugar Plum Circus. And the Chief from Fully Spun. And I'm going to use them together. This is going to be the body of the sweater. And this is going to be the color work of the sweater. And I'm so excited. And as soon as I finish that gradient crochet blanket, that's when I'm going to wind this up and cast these on. Normally, I would wind this up and cast it on right now. But I don't know, you guys. My brain has just changed. I hear a lot of people saying that because they're in quarantine or they're at home, you know, social distancing or whatever, that they just, they're casting on all the projects and they're buying all the yarn and kind of feeling like anxious and not sure what to work on. And it is just the opposite for me. It's the weirdest thing. Like it really just is the darndest thing. I just kind of want to work monogamously, 
monogamously on my blanket. I want to get it done. I'm enjoying the process of working on it. Who am I? I don't know. It's very strange, but I like it. I am finding that I enjoy the feeling of finishing projects and getting stuff done. Um, I am working on working a lot from stash this year. The first two months I was less than excellent at it and did things like buy these. <laughs> but this month, I one of my goals for stash, stash down or stash goals, whatever, is that I will use more yarn than I purchase. And so far I have not bought any yarn in March and it is March 19th. So, hey -o. I'm finishing projects, I'm using stash yarn, I'm meeting my goals, and I feel really, really good about that. And I'm very happy about it. So, meeting goals. I guess it's less interesting for you guys to just see me doing one blanket podcast after podcast, but it, like, it's getting done. Oh, it's getting done. You're not going to see this blanket for two years on it. Like this, this shawl. Oh, by the way, the test for this shawl is almost done. It's going to be out in like a week and a half. It's going to be published. Yes. Because this one did languish forever. I started this over a year ago and I'm only just now publishing it. But this is the other thing. Look at this. I'm getting patterns done. They're getting published. Projects are getting done. I don't like, who am I? I don't recognize myself in a good way. And I really, really like it. So I hope everybody's staying well. I hope you're doing okay. I keep seeing people saying notes. You don't need to be productive. Oh, I only have one finger for quotes. You don't need to be productive during a pandemic. And that is very true. If you are somebody who normally works a really, really demanding nine to five, or you're not used to being home with kids and all of a sudden you're finding yourself home with kids, homeschooling, work schedules are up in the air, school schedules, blah, 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 all of this on top of you. I totally get that. And if you... You know, you just need like the mental space, the head space, the relaxed space, and you want to just like be calm and do relaxing things and self-care and all of that. I am 100% behind that. But if you're one of those people who says, you know, I'm at home and I feel, I feel like I'm floating. I feel sort of just like untethered and I'm not sure what to do and off balance and I don't really know where to go or what to do. My encouragement to you is to set yourself goals because that feeling of being untethered and what am I supposed to do and where am I supposed to go is something that I've really struggled with as a stay at home mom. I don't talk about it much. This isn't like a mental health podcast. It's not a stay at home mom podcast. It's a yarn and designing one. But people are saying to me now, how do you stay at home all the time? How do you do this? And one of the ways for me that I function with being at home all the time with very mundane tasks in my daily life is I set myself goals. I like doing checklists. Um, I get up in the morning and I get dressed, which is why I'm saying you don't have to, but I find that it helps my mindset. It helps my mind if I get up in the morning and I get dressed. I'm not super fancy. Like, look at me, look at me. I've got like my messy mom hair. I put this headband on so I would look fancy for you guys. But I get up, I get dressed, I go downstairs, and I will make myself a list of goals for the day. And it even can be stuff as simple as, like, empty last night's dishes and wash new dishes. Check. Do a podcast. Check. Squish pretty yarn. Check. Crochet five rows on a blanket. Check. But just that getting dressed, getting yourself together, and having goals and feeling like you're accomplishing something is huge. It is huge for mental health. If you can get outside, I'm not saying like, go out and have a party. No, no, no. Social distancing, right? Go take a walk. Go, I don't know, go on like a photo hike, okay? Go around your neighborhood. Yesterday, I went around the neighborhood with the kids and we were just looking for flowers. Are there flowers yet? It's almost spring. Look, there's a flower. What color? I mean, I have little kids. What color is it? What kind of flower is it? Are you excited? What's your favorite flower? What's and it's just get outside and move. 
And I don't mean that in like a health way or like, like you have to do 70 workouts. But like, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that fresh air and sunlight are good for your body and they're good for your mind. So enjoy it. Even when you don't feel like it. <laughs> because frankly, when you don't feel like it is the most important time. I woke up yesterday and was like, I think I'm going to stay in my pajamas all day and I'm not going to move and I'm going to, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to do this. And I was like, no, Ruth, do the things you have to do. Do the things you know need to be done. Get up, get dressed, get the kids dressed, go downstairs, you know, and that sort of self-talk that like walking yourself through, it'll be okay. I can do this. This is what we're going to do for today. Do the first thing first and do what needs to be done. And then really enjoy your knitting time when you get to sit down because yes, when, <laughs> when all the stuff is done, you sit down, you get your knitting time, you get your crochet time. Ta-da. That was longer than I intended. Let me know what you guys are doing in quarantine. <laughs> Mommy, I need your help. Okay, I am needed. Something is urgently requested of me by my two-year-old. So I'm going to go do whatever needs helping. I hope you guys are having a great day. I will talk to you later. Bye.